Thanks for checking out this horror film review from the Banana Laser Horror Podcast. You can find our full archive of every unedited show at horrorphilia.com. Also, subscribe to Banana Laser on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. It says YouTube. Come on, click subscribe. Thanks, and keep on banana-ing. Hello! Hey, world! Guess what? I'm Banana Laser's sister. Happy Halloween, Banana Brains, and welcome to another episode of Banana Laser. My name is Matt, Wazell if you're nasty, and with me, as always, is the man who wants to do it with the mask on, Dave Z. What the fuck is up, Dave Z? Let me introduce myself. I'm Joe Grizzly, bitch. (laughs) I'm gonna cut that mask right off of your face. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's, I knew you were going to do that No fucking way You knew I was going to do that? Yep, I was about to give you a Joe Grizzly introduction Holy but... shit Well, introduce myself, it fits in perfectly you Yeah, know? perfect, yeah Yeah, great character Yeah, so guys, yeah, welcome back to Banana Laser And wow, what a crazy month it's been It's been a, been a blast And um, I'm ready to get into it But before we do We have another special guest on the show And this guy, you guys should know definitely who he is. He's the host of his own podcast called The Skeleton Crew. He's the director of an infamous movie called The Ghost of Michael Myers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Edwards. What's up, everybody? I got a Taco Supreme talking back at me, too. So uh, I'm not going to pass this beast in peace. I'd rather you know head to the lounge and uh, pass it right next to you guys. And, you know. Yeah, welcome to the show, man. It's been, it's been uh, a long time coming. Uh, you know, we have you to thank. Thank a lot for the show. Uh, you inspire us. You promote us, and and so thank you very much. And it's a pleasure yes, to sir. have you on. Yep. So uh, as I mentioned, guys, yeah, this is our last show. Uh, this time we are going to cover uh, another two movies in the the Halloween canon, I guess, and that's Rob Zombie's uh, remake and the sequel to the remake. Uh, and then also uh, at the end, we're gonna have a little bonus uh, <laughs> bonus discussion on the ghost of Michael Myers. Uh, oh, if you guys I see that one, yeah. Well, you you gotta you know, I, oh, you know you must. yeah. Go to our group page. I'm, I post it there and uh, check it out. You know, it's on YouTube. It's a it's quite a quirky little film, and it, <laughs> it adds a lot to the mysticism of Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, six bullets can't kill him, but you know what they say about red buckets. <laughs> No shit. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that, but but right now let's let's fucking let's hit the ground running here. Let's get into Halloween. Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, this came out in two thousand seven. You know, this is a polarizing film. Uh, you know, right off the bat, I have to say that you know we have to get this out of the way because you can't look at this film and not compare it to John Carpenter's Halloween. Uh, I think we're all in the same boat. We think that movie is a classic. Uh, It's an almost perfect film. Um, And this story is not that different from that movie. Uh, It's very much kind of the same story. Not a lot has changed. But uh, Rob Zombie's technique, his style, is very different. And um, that's unmistakable. Uh, Mainly due to the, to the fact that Rob Zombie goes pushes a lot more to the shock um, of killing and stuff like that, and really the suspense that John Carpenter built with that first movie. There's not a lot of suspense in Rob Zombie's film. The, uh, there's not a lot of subtlety. He kind of just lays everything out, and in fact, he really just pushes pushes it in your face. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about that. What do you guys think? I mean. Uh, is was that a good direction for Zombie to take it? I don't know. It's I guess it's what you would expect out of Rob Zombie by now, kind mm-hmm. of. But at the time when it first dropped, nobody, I don't know, I, I, at least I didn't know what to expect, what it was going to come up with. But, yeah, suspense just isn't his game. And suspense is just a lost art in general. It, it, it's a sign of the times. I'm not saying there's no suspenseful movies, but... <sighs> Now it's not surprising, no. At the time, who knew? Yeah. I don't know what you guys were thinking it was going to be. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. As far as uh, what he did differently, um, 
I'm just surprised uh, when you watch like or you listen to his commentary on this movie and you watch the making of that movie and stuff like that. He is a really super intelligent guy and he really seems to have uh, everything like he he's he's five steps ahead of you, it seems. So it it actually surprises me. It, it's a letdown in, in hindsight in a weird way that knowing he's so smart and and the fact that he went a typical, very cliche route with, well, well, what kind of life does a serial killer have as a child? Well, he kills little animals, and then he has a asshole stepfather, broken family, his sister and him fight all the time, bullies that he gets bullied at school. I mean, it's it's like um, I don't know. It's like the uh, textbook of uh, the making of a serial killer. And to me, I'm just surprised that he did that. I just thought it was uh, not that smart. But the thing is, when you watch the movie. The odd thing is, although I'm very, uh, it, I think it's a bad move. At, at the same time, I think that's the best part of the movie. I think things fall apart yeah. once he starts copying John Carpenter's movie because, like you said, it's just not his style is is fantastic in the beginning of this movie, and then mm-hmm. it just goes nowhere. And and like the characters are just so bad. Like, and I think where that suffered, um, like the three girls and stuff, and and the two kids. In this one, I know why that falls apart. If if you guys agree with that, and it's because um, he it's it was it was very loosely scripted. He let them pretty much say whatever they wanted and come up with things uh, on their own. Yeah, I definitely agree with you about uh, the beginning being the strongest point. The first thirty minutes is essentially uh, kind of a day in the life of Michael Myers as a young kid on the day that he kills his sister and it elaborates in this movie and he kills his stepfather and and a bully and stuff like that too. And it's definitely, it's the first 30 minutes of the movie and yeah, it's not really elaborating on anything that we couldn't piece together ourselves. Uh, Is it something that we wanted to see? You know, I, I don't know, but that being said, it's the it's the best part of the movie because yeah. because once he's in the the Smiths Grove, it's terrible. Oh, we don't need to know any of that. <laughs> and one and once the John Carpenter stuff starts, uh, it's all familiar ground that he kind of doesn't do right. And, yeah. and so that th- first thirty minutes is the best part, in my opinion. Yeah. It's two hours long. We all watched all three of us watched the director's cut, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. In the, it's two fucking hours long. That's long. I mean, this yeah. is a director's cut, yes, and yeah, you expect them to be longer, but it's a slasher. And, you know, I think that he put so much into the first half, and you thought that the, the second half would be easy. Just make a fucking slasher at the end, you know, final chase, whatever. It's been done hundreds of times. So I think he put everything into it thinking it was going to be real easy to do the second half. I don't know. I, I'm actually into it enough, even after he gets to, into the asylum – I'm into it until about the last, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then, done. It's well, the, 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 the chase just goes on way too long at the end. Horrible. Uh, you, oh, you my fuck, God. It loses all steam by the end uh, because he's been going so hard full throttle this whole time that you can't maintain that pace. Yeah. Uh, whereas if it were like Carpenter's movie, and that's basically a slow build – until the climactic scene, which is how you fucking make a movie. I mean, I don't want to say he can't make a movie, but, uh, you know, yeah, he definitely blows, has a blowout uh, about 30 minutes before the end, definitely. <laughs> yeah, and here's a big question I want to ask you two guys. Like, uh, you know, we knew nothing of Michael except that he killed his sister and walked down and just stood still for five minutes while they pulled a camera away from him <laughs> in the original. So, like, uh, in this one, you know, a little too much about him and how he came to be. So the big question is, and also you didn't you didn't know why he was going after uh, Laurie in the in the original. Now, like Zombie took, not only did he remake the movie, but he he remade the sequel also because he used the element that Drunken Night John Carpenter wrote part two and made <laughs> her his sister. He implemented that in, instantly. So do do you guys feel that um, does knowing a lot more about Michael take away or add to this uh, movie? I think it. I think it takes away definitely. Uh, it, 
put you know the more information it goes with almost anything the more information that you have uh the the less you're going to feel about it because it's whatever they tell you is is going to be worse than whatever your mind's going to make up yeah I, I think all this information although i feel like it's the strongest part of the movie yeah uh it's not really needed we weren't ever really wondering you know what happened to him in the you know smith's grove Ever we kind of got that all from Loomis's dialogue in the other movies. So apparently nothing. They just stood there like mumbling oh to God. each other. Like, <laughs> oh, how bad was that? And what about the idea that people said that they wanted he wanted to make the first half of this movie an entire movie? Like, can you imagine suffering uh. through that? Like for for a whole ninety minutes? Like how long until he killed everybody? And then you'd have to sit in that sanitarium all that time. Mm-hmm. I, uh, <laughs> oh, no way. What he could have done for a first movie was bakes basically the first thirty minutes of this movie it was kind of like the climax of a movie. Really, it was so ramped up. I mean, the, in the kills and everything, it seemed like a climax of a movie. When you got that last shot of him sitting in the cop car and he turns and looks at the camera, oh, that's yeah. like that's like an ending of a fucking movie. You could have rolled right. credits right there. Yeah, and what about that shot? That's a it's that's great. brilliant filmmaking. Did you oh, guys absolutely. notice? Yes, it, you noticed everybody was perfectly still mm-hmm. as yep. he panned across the entire crime scene, and then when he gets to Michael, only Michael turns and looks at us. Great. It's great, and you know what it reminds me of? It's what we talked about on the first show, and I was going to bring that up that we talked about how everybody's frozen and everybody just stands still, like when they first take Michael's mask. Oh off. yeah, yeah. That's wow. what that's oh, why, yeah, that, no it's a shit. callback. It's a yep. yeah, right. That's why I think he did that intentionally because they wow. are all standing still. No shit, I never got that. That's brilliant. Did, yeah, isn't that. that what you think? Isn't that the, is that what you thought, Alex? That was Absolutely, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, huh. I thought that was cool. I noticed because it's the exact same scene. It's right after Michael gets home, and instead of two parents come home taking off the mask, it's his mother, and same thing. What happened? And the next thing you know, yeah, it's yep. the first thing you see. And I got to admit, you know, it was done better than John Carpenter did it. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. In I agree. a way, mm-hmm. I, I still yeah. love the Carpenter shot. It's still oh a sure, classic. Yeah, but I think this was <laughs> more uh, stylistic. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it was. And sometimes Zombie does it, and he does that in this movie. The the opening shot is of this quote, and <laughs> this this right here goes back to what I said about Rob Zombie not being able to be subtle. Is that you, he literally has to say has to show words on screen to to explain shit and stuff like that. It's like and and that's the first shot of the movie. It's like uh, okay, here's kind of a, a, a my theory about the whole movie and it's this Loomis quote about evil being among us or some bullshit, I don't know, but it it uh it it, it just it, right there it struck me. It's like Rob Zombie cannot do subtle whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's even more so in, in the second movie, and we'll get into that. But uh, yeah, just so just right off the bat, it's like, oh my god, you know, just no subtlety whatsoever. What was the quote? Oh, it was just a loop, like one of those Loomis. Uh, yeah, so, it was a new on. one though. Yeah, it was a new Loomis quote. That wasn't something from part one. I think it's okay. something that actually ended up in the book in part two, mm-hmm. and it was something like the the people who we should be the most afraid of or something are not the evil ones that are in hell, but the ones that silently. Um, do something with us in the darkness and something about the devil's eyes or something like that. You know? <laughs> devil's eyes, rage. Rage! You know, <laughs> go <laughs> home, rage, Michael. Go away! <laughs> <laughs> oh, go home. It was just, it was just him, him yelling at Jamie Lloyd where Michael is. That's, that's <laughs> a quote. It didn't really dawn on me until I, because I watched these back to back, and it didn't really dawn on me until the second movie opened, and it had a definition of what a fucking the white horse meant. And it's like, oh come on, dude, we fucking oh, get it. It means death or rage or something. Rage. It's like fuck, we get it. Yeah, that's just something that struck me. And then the the movie, uh, you know, it opens with Michael's home life, and holy shit, is this the? I mean, <laughs> this it's is awful. This is the nuts. This is nuts. So how anybody could even be somewhat sane growing up in this household. I mean, yeah, you know, one thing Rob Zombie does great is he has the craziest, sleaziest, nastiest characters in, in all of his movies. Oh, and yeah. and the stepdad, yeah. Ronnie, is no fucking ex- ex- exception. <laughs> he is fucking nuts, dude. And every line he says is a fucking crack up. Every I single will crawl one. over there and go fuck the <laughs> shit out of you. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No shit. Yeah. I that that's that that's your buddy there, uh, William. Oh Forsythe yeah. There, <laughs> oh god. Yeah. William Forsyth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> an asshole that guy is in real life. You know. Yeah. And, and it's a shame. There you go. <laughs> I, I I won't compromise uh, what I say on shows because of my personal feelings. I that is my favorite character. I think and. Um, Maybe all these movies. I, I kid around and say Bucky from Part Four is my favorite character, but <laughs> but uh, I think Ronnie is uh, he's awesome, dude. I, I just love that guy. And and what I really love about um, they show the uh, the breakfast scene of Michael's life in that family, and then they show the breakfast of Lori's mm-hmm, life with mm-hmm. her new step family, and it's oh, kind yeah. of a contrast. And you see, and I think it was deliberately done two breakfast scenes to see how. He grew up in to see her life and how she's out of that family into a new one. And mm-hmm. I think that's like an interesting uh, – I think there's a lot of cool choices Rob Zombie made. Yeah, so. that's that's definitely interesting. Uh, that makes makes perfect sense now that you spell it out. And there's even yeah. – there's a, like illicit you know, sex talk in both. But you right. can see where it's done with an actual loving family where it's – you know, it seems normal. And then where it's done with a fucked up family where the stepfather wants to fuck the stepdaughter. Get What the I fuck? <laughs> They're all terrible. And yeah. you know what? When I went to see this movie the first time, I was fucking – I was pumped because, you know, obviously it's Halloween – huge fan of the original of course and i was a big big fan of hell of a thousand corpses and you know and i also like devil's reject so i'm like okay hey shit good this guy's doing this and now it's halloween hey expectations were kind of high for me so i went in there and you know i know you're not supposed to compare but it's hard the first time especially back then there was only a few remakes yeah and you know and to see the way this started and the fucking language that was being used and the way they were behaving, I was literally fucking, I don't even, I can't put it into words. Uh, I was almost kind of in shock for the first mm-hmm. five minutes of it to see yeah. that. I was like, no, uh, absolutely. You know, I was like, I, I, I don't like this. I don't fucking. It makes you feel uncomfortable, which I think is what he's trying to do. <clears throat> yeah, I felt the same way. When I was, I remember watching, I remember sitting there and looking up at the screen, I was like, I, I, it was a turn off, and I and see that Dave. I think me and you, because we were uh, me and Dave used to talk a lot in 2007, actually, on this message board, and um, we both saw the same clip. And I think I, I, Matt, I wonder if you saw this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they leaked a clip online deliberately to to sell this movie, you know. And the clip was um, all it was was Lori running down, like, limping, running down the street, screaming, Michael chasing her. Then she gets into her house, closes the door, and then she goes, go, guys, go hide, go upstairs or whatever. And all of a sudden, it's like, boom! And you look up, and Michael's in the, and they, they, the kid screams, and then he starts banging the door, and he goes, bam! It just opens up, and it's like, it's like crazy. And I, when, after seeing that, man, I was so excited. I was like, this mm. is going to be badass. People are going to know what the fuck is up with Michael Myers. It's going <laughs> to breathe energy back into this. I love it, man. I was so excited. After seeing Devil's Rejects, I was pumped. I was so for this, dude. And and then, man, after the, after the Asylum, man, I don't oh, know. Yeah. Just all that kind of went away, but we'll, I guess we'll get there. But Yeah, it yeah. should have built up to that. I mean... Yeah. So, you know, it, it just doesn't shine like it should. Here's what bothers me. It made me hate everyone in that fucking family. Mm, and, oh, yeah. Right off the bat, I didn't like any of them. I mean, Sherry Moon was, uh, was, you know, it wasn't anything too terrible, but I'm not a fan of speaking that way in front of your children. She was F-bombing them back and all that stuff, and her character was okay except for that. But obviously Ronnie was an asshole, you know, and then... Uh, the sister, she was a total asshole. You're acting that way and jerking off the fucking thing. Oh, talking about jerking off in hamsters and shit. What That's kind of stupid. American fucking family yeah. life is that? Yeah. And then Michael, you want to have sympathy for him because they kind of try to build it later. But <laughs> so he's an asshole. Throats of hamsters. Yeah, he's yeah. doing the thing with the hamsters, and then the sister's trying to talk to him in the bathroom, and he's putting his hands over his ears, and he's going, Ah, I'm not hearing you. Everybody in the house is fucking oh. yelling. Right? Mm-hmm. There's no sympathy for anybody. So I'm like, what? it's terrible. Yeah, not even Michael, which I, no. I think f- if you're going to start a movie, this is basically Michael's movie. You know, like like John Carpenter's, it was Laurie Strode's kind of movie. But this is fucking Michael's movie. If you're going to go into his background this much, it's his movie. And you need to make him sympathetic, I think, in a way. <laughs> and it definitely does not do that. I mean, no. even they Rob Zombie. 
later, you know, but it was yeah, too late. But they got us. They got to do it right from Jump Street. They right. didn't do it. Uh, even in the Devil's Rejects, he was able to take those fucking <laughs> uh, deplorable fucking characters and make them sympathetic by the end of the movie, you know. <laughs> so he can do it. He just didn't do it here at all. Oh. Hey, shit pants. What's going on? You know, um. I heard your sister got caught selling blowjobs in the bathroom. I heard they had to pump the cum out of her stomach. Hey, Mikey, how's your mom doing? You know, my old man said that for a buck, she'd rub her tits on his face. Shut up. What the fuck oh. did you say, faggot? Mikey's upset. Look how yeah. tough he is. Ball liquor. Check this out. I was thinking of making copies of Mommy for the whole school. So, yeah, then we see, you know, fucking Michael's school wife. He's obviously bullied. You know, his mom's a stripper. This, you know, and... They had to and, pump the cum out of her <laughs> stomach. <laughs> that, that is a good line. Like, that kid said every mean... Like, it's right? like he, all he had in his brain, his vocabulary, was like mean line after mean line. Like, he couldn't say a single thing that was even neutral. Like... <laughs> Like anything. <laughs> that that kid lives to fucking pick on this. Like he cut out that thing out of a newspaper. He's like, I can't fucking wait oh, to yeah. fucking pull this out and show this fucking asshole. I hate him so much. You know, whatever. <laughs> the rabbit in red. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. But he was an asshole to everybody because you see him. They 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 show a little more of him bullying. He comes on. He grabs the kid's winter hat and he says something to him. You want it back? You want it back? You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he throws it. Oh uh, yeah, you want this yeah, kid see? to die. Absolutely. Oh, yes. And he it's, definitely it's gets it. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's wandering home through the fucking woods for some reason. You know, I guess his kids do. And then, uh, yeah, so Michael, you know, he attacks him, you know, and... It's great. <laughs> it, it's it's pretty it's pretty brutal scene. I mean, this is the first kill that, you know, he kills a person yeah. uh, and not an animal. So it, it's definitely brutal. You get a, you get a sense of... Uh, of of Michael's killing style, so to speak, and which is funny because you would think he would start a little, he would be more awkward at first, but yeah. just just right off the bat, he's just already in like you know zombie murderer kind of mode. You know what I mean? He he doesn't he doesn't ramp up at all. He just starts out at a hundred percent with his kills. Um, but there's one there's one thing I didn't like about Zombie's direction in in this scene and some of the other scenes is that. He puts the camera uh, with stuff obstructing your view on purpose. And I don't know what he's trying to do there, but that always bothers me. He's, like, got the camera with, like, bushes in front uh, of the camera and then there in, you know, in the background, essentially. So you're kind of, like, trying to look around these bushes while he beats the shit out of them. And I never really liked that. <clears throat> but never he did noticed. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's just something that I, I always noticed it even the first time i watched it, i'm like why do i have to look through these fucking bushes what am i loomis <laughs> from fucking part one yeah, scary you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> michael stop beating his ass with a stick <laughs> yeah. yeah no shit uh, uh but uh there is one shot i do like and that's where the kid is finally you know really dying and you see, I guess it's his point of view. You see, like the treetops. Oh and it's yeah, kinda, awesome. it's kind of spiraling. That yeah, that's a great, great shot. That that's a definite example of of zombies' excellent direction because he can do it absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so then you know it's it's Halloween night, and fucking, <laughs> you know, we get more of his home life and all this stuff. Well, this is where the first, uh, uh, you know, this is where he he takes on his family, and this shit is fucking awesome. Uh, I loved all of these kills. Um, yeah. <laughs> 100%. I love how, you know, he's, his sister's supposed to take him trick or treating. She doesn't cause she's a whore. And <laughs> <laughs> how and, about that thing that he's allowed to go? I, I, let me interrupt one second because mm-hmm. this is where it fits the story. <laughs> his mother, they get back after she sees all that shit. They call her for, away from the strip club. They show her all the pictures about the fucking dead cats in the locker and pictures he took all the animals he killed and shit. You know, mm-hmm. and then Loomis is there. You know, he's introduced to the serious problem here. Now, she doesn't know, obviously, that, you know, he killed the kid when he ran off, but he ran off. And on top of that, like I said, all those pictures and all that. That's serious, dramatic shit. If someone right. showed me that of my child, Holy fuck. I mean, bottom line, no one's trick-or-treating that night. My family is in crisis. It's, you know what I mean? That's, wow, yeah. No, right? no shit. That's just bad parenting. Yeah, she's right. terrible. 
But, but, but you know what she says? She goes, I shouldn't even let you go trick-or-treating after that shit you pulled today at school. <laughs> and I'm thinking... <laughs> the shit you pulled. Right? It's not like he skipped the class or fucking pulled a fire alarm, you know? <laughs> and he's grounded. He's fucking been murdering animals. <laughs> Taking photographs of him. Right. And I shouldn't let you trick or treat. Yeah. Right? I no Nintendo they... this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Those seconds on dessert, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is wild, man. Yeah, yeah. and I, earlier I was going to say how everybody in this family seems terrible except for... Uh, the mother, but yeah, no, she's terrible. Yeah, yeah that, that is terrible. Yeah, no, she's she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. Um, she's but, a real asshole in the work print and the other one because they show her the phone rings and she picks up the phone and they're calling her into school and she's dropping f bombs. She goes, "You gotta fucking call me from work." And then then she gets there and she goes, "Oh, it sure feels like you fucking do." I mean, come on, who acts yeah, that way? Yeah. So I, I don't even have sympathy for her anymore. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't even uh, follow her character either. Like those. Uh, she no. so n- seems. I don't know. Maybe it does because she does sort of talk like that to Ronnie, I guess. But yeah, but she, do- she doesn't come off as like a, a kind of person who would talk like that to people in school. Uh, you know, like the administrate uh, administrative people. Like I don't know. Yeah. Well, when just... I watched it last night or the night before, it really resonated. I was like, "What the fuck? What a what an asshole!" You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just yeah. fucking like. I, before I, I thought she would maybe have been the only good egg in the family, but. No, right. He's fucking rotten. <laughs> no, I think that goes for uh, uh, Angel Myers. I guess is her yeah. name, which is kind of strange. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, Michael definitely. I guess you know he sees her as the innocent, and so you know she does nothing wrong. He he kills his entire family because they're all assholes. And yeah. now, if his mother was at home at the time, would he have killed her? Uh, hmm. You know that that. I, I wondered that this time because I'm like, well, she's not definitely, you know, innocent. I mean, she raised Michael in this environment. Is she sitting there calling him names and shit like that? No, absolutely not. But well, she's an enabler, really. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but she loves him. She loves her, and she loves Boo. You know, it's not Boo. she, Michael. <laughs> you know, morning, Boo. You know, he loves he loves the baby. He loves his mama. I think that much is evident. In- Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just, I just love how it's a Halloween movie, and he calls the baby "boo." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great joke. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh. <laughs> so kind of uh, fucked up. Though, you know? <laughs> uh, I, one thing I do love is that before he kills his family, you know, he's sitting on the stoop. He wants to go trick or treating. Uh, apparently, he does because then he's at the kitchen table eating candy. Right, and I just love it. Yeah, it's it's like all it's like he becomes someone else in this little in this part. He's just eating candy. You know, it looks like he's not even really thinking about anything. And then he gets up and he goes to the drawer and he gets the duct tape and the <laughs> knife and he fucking. I guess Ronnie is fucking passed out drunk because he yeah. duct tapes him to the chair and then that throat slit. That whole scene is great. It works. That's not wake up. He's getting me. duct taped to a chair though. That's what I think too about that. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah he got to be strange. pretty fucking, you know, pretty medicated. But I guess he's a he's a drunk. So. Yeah. And he's probably on pain pills because he's got <laughs> what, like two different casts on. He's all and broken shit. up here, bitch. <laughs> 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 well, here, here's the thing though. Like I always, I was curious. You know, I'm not a huge fan of this movie, so I've, admittedly, I haven't watched it a lot. So. I don't know. I, I forgot to really pay attention to this part. I was curious as to what do you think, like, what do you guys think made Michael snap? I mean, I thought it was maybe because he couldn't go trick-or-treating because his sister blew him off for the guy and he thought he mm-hmm. was going. But then, like you said, he's eating candy, but it was eating candy that they were supposed to give out to other kids. Like, what What do you think made him snap exactly? Uh, as soon as he go... made the first kill. That's why I think it was, too. And, and the mask. Can you realize that he puts the mask on before he makes that kill? Mm-hmm. Just like Michael does in in the original series, he only kills with the mask on. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, I just think that fucking thing sent him over the edge, and I guess because it was Halloween, he happened to have a mask on, and he fucking whacked the kid, pretty fucking, pretty good. And yeah. Then, yeah, I think know. that was it. Yeah, he just, uh, you know, a- after that first kill, he was just like, okay, yeah, I understand now. This is what I have to do. You fucking <laughs> piss me off. I'm gonna take you out, essentially. Yeah, so, maybe. <clears throat> I don't know. But yeah, so then he goes upstairs, and uh, uh, you know, th- and we get introduced to the Michael Myers mask 
yeah. uh, in this movie. Now, uh, you know, it's a strange kind of way to bring it in. Um, you know, I don't know if I like the introduction of it too much, but one thing I do like is the look of the mask. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel, but I feel like this is the first time in a long time that the mask has actually looked good. Um, it, it, it definitely, it's got more features, I think, than, you know, the classic mask, but you can tell they tried to recreate the design of the classic Shatner mask. <clears throat> what do you guys think? I agree. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah, I agree with everything you said, and I don't have much to add to it. It's, yeah. it's a, a pretty solid, uh, a, a new take on the old mask, and it fits in perfectly with this movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, the first one obviously looked the best. I think this one I looked better than the second one, even though it's the same. It just didn't look as good. It was like kind of a little mushy. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't like this the way the second one looked exactly for most of the uh, scenes, but uh, this this one reminded me sort of a part six mask. Um, Hmm. It it was I think it was definitely it's my favorite besides the original and I like how they aged it too and uh, you know I I I think it was uh, yeah I I'm definitely happy about the look of this mask definitely mm-hmm. yeah by the time it comes back around later in the movie it is <laughs> is my favorite mask uh, the the aged look on it yeah. looks so fucking awesome uh, <clears throat> I love it but yeah there's lots of uh, you know. Zombie and, and these next kills, he really did some stylistic things uh, directorially that worked great. Um, you know, stuff like the sound design uh, when he's killing the boyfriend and stuff like that. The the sound cool. cuts out and uh, and stuff like that. And it's just it, stylistically, it's great. And you know, when you do stuff like this, you always ride that fine line of being like a an asshole director of saying, Oh, look what I can do. You know, with, when I make movies, I'm making art, you know, stuff like that. But zombie has had so much practice with it from, you know, doing videos and his other shit that, uh, it, he really knows what he's doing now. <clears throat> and stylistically, th- this next couple kills are great. Uh, and what about the, the image of that mask on a little child's body? <laughs> that's, that's awesome, man. You, you know what? It looks like a it looks like a midget. That's what I always remember. <laughs> well, yeah. it's actually a chick, you know. Um, what? The, what? The, yeah, the the stunt double. Uh, they didn't want um, that little. I don't know how old he was, like twelve or whatever. They didn't want him running like knives under people's throat, and they didn't want him touching Judith's leg when she was because they thought it would be weird to have a ten year old caressing the thighs of a you know eighteen year old girl and stuff. So they had a, a woman. Uh, fill in for a good chunk of that, yeah. So hmm. what, a, a little person? A very no, uh, just a very small petite woman who is oh, okay. very wow. short. Huh. Wow, yeah. that's crazy, huh? Yeah, no shit. Yeah, it's definitely an iconic kind of image, and uh, they've already played the classic theme earlier in the movie. But this uh, shot of them coming down the hallway and they're oh. playing dun dun. Yeah, done on you know, it just fucking works great. I mean, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of moment that makes you you know gives you goose goose flesh. You know, it makes your hair stand up. It's it works fucking great. Yep. Definitely exciting. Yep, that uh, whole yeah. that whole sequence was great from the time he slits the guy's throat mm-hmm. till the time Judith is dead. The fucking the, the killing of the boyfriend with the aluminum bat, which for some reason you could see that happening in real life because you've held those bats in your hand and you just I don't know. You, uh, it's crossed my mind in my life that fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. It just it just seems like something that could happen. Getting bashed to death with a fucking aluminum bat, and then mm-hmm. everything you said about the the Jew, the scene is great. And you know, he's stabbing and slashing her. It's fucking you know, it's very good. And the music, right. yeah, the fucking shape stalks theme, the fucking dinner. Oh my gosh, uh, yeah. Are you guys disappointed that he didn't look up at his own knife while he was stabbing her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. I haven't thought about that. No, no POV. No POV. Yeah, yeah that's an in- interesting uh, style, uh, you know, or interesting choice to, to leave that out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cons- considering that uh, I feel like once we jump forward and the, the kind of shots where we're following Lori down the street definitely feels Carpenter-esque. Mm. Uh, with the movement of the camera and stuff like that, for, so for him to leave that out, uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Hmm. Never yeah, thought they don't about do, that. They don't do them anymore. POV. That's why people love the Maniac remake so much is that it stuck true with the the POVs of the original. It's just mm-hmm. like a, a lost art form. But look what happened. A lot of people like that Ra- Maniac movie, and that's that's one of the the things about it that you know people are talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think he, I wish he would have done a little bit of that. You know. Yeah, I don't know. It might have been. Uh... 
maybe just yeah too much you know it's just like come on do your own thing already uh you know yeah. so who knows i guess so yeah i hear you i first met michael 17 years ago when i first met him he was a, a sweet charming little boy he had he had nothing inside there was something missing void there was no conscience no reason even in a, a rudimentary sense of life or death right or wrong he's come back for her tell me michael what do you remember about that night halloween uh what do you mean like my costume and candy so you remember nothing about the killing. You remember nothing about getting a knife. Mm -mm. I didn't do that. Oh, okay. But you were covered in blood. Whose blood was it? Mm -hmm. You know, then we flash forward 11 months later uh, to Smith's Grove, and we get Loomis's second introduction. And, oh my God, you know, we talked about earlier, but this stuff is so fucking boring. Nothing, <laughs> nothing fucking happens. Uh, Michael reverts back to being like a normal kid, uh, you know, except he's wearing masks and stuff like that. But he seems more normal. And it's just like, you know, they're they're answering stuff that we don't need to, to know. You don't and care. It's, it's, yeah, it's basically like 20 minutes of the movie that it doesn't matter what happens you know you could you could have established loomis and michael's relationship with three lines of dialogue you know you didn't yeah. have to film all this shit and, and and show it all it was it was just boring and uh it, unnecessary in my opinion <clears throat> well, i got two things to say about this um one i i thought it was, it was a riveting kill uh when he killed the nurse because the way Zombie shot that, man, with that yeah. goddamn thing blaring in the background, that emergency awesome. sound, and the slow motion, and the way, like, it was like everybody was, like, deaf or something like that when mm -hmm. it was happening. And, like, I thought that was – and, like, how Loomis just stared and it, how he just was in – he just couldn't believe what he was seeing. And the mother just realized – this is not this kid I'm trying to make. Like, she, you know, th these rose-colored uh, glasses are not what's, you know, I got to take these off. This is not the kid who I think it is. He's mm -hmm. just not a nice kid. He's a killer. And I got to wake up to that fact. And, uh, you know, and although it, this was an enormous waste of time, and uh, that was the only good scene in that asylum. And I think what Zombie tried to establish was. He tried to bring a realism. Everything he wanted to be realistic. And when they were sitting there, and then all of a sudden there was a, there's another shot. They they show snow, and then they start they pan from the right and they just go across. And it's Michael at the table, his mom, and I guess Loomis on the left. And she's just like there, bored out of her mind. Michael's just sitting there, not really talking. And it just like shows you how this can wear on you. And like, it you know, it just brought it to real terms. Like, man, this must be exhausting shit, mm -hmm. man. Just doing this months and months and months and trying to reach this kid who's just gone and I guess the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is what do you think about the approach zombie took that Michael didn't remember killing anybody Yeah, that's that, it pity do you pity him or not mm -hmm. that was the problem I had last night mm -hmm. yeah I, I didn't I didn't really like that uh, just because it seemed like the, the switch had already been flipped you know, when mm. he, he, I mean, he killed what, five people or something, or four people in the yeah. beginning? It's like, and then all of a sudden he's acting like a normal kid, like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, what's going on? You know, but he and, forgets, but he forget doesn't remember. Uh, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's, that's the part that's bothersome. And I, I will go on record and say that I don't mind the stuff in Smith's Grove. I know you guys hate on it. I, I, I thought that was the best part of the film. What? Not the best part. <laughs> the first half was much better than the second half, and the reason being, that's just one more part. It's not as good as the original, is the beginning part, when he kills everybody at the house. And I'm not saying it's that good, but that carried the first half of the movie for me. I didn't mind it. I think sometimes it's a little long-winded, but I kind of like the discussions they had. And Alex, exactly what you said about that last scene with the nurse, fucking, you're 100% right. That, that, that scene is great, and yeah. it stuck with me since the first time I saw it. You know, yep. But I don't mind that shit in there. And then, you know, he's talking... And he says, um, you know, I want to talk about what happened Halloween night, Loomis says to him. And he's like, he goes, well, how we got candy? And this, well, anyway, bottom line is, to sum it up, he didn't remember. So now you're put in a position, 
do you fucking feel pity or not? Because you, if they didn't make you hate him in the beginning, at least that's what I felt, you know, the way he was acting, then you would have sympathy for him, I think, for, yeah. because of that. A, well, a little bit, don't you think? The, well, yeah, but... It, yeah, I mean, it's a weird choice. But here's where I think Zombie dropped the ball really bad. He he went on to explain why Michael doesn't talk for 15 years. And Dave, you just... We talked about it earlier. What was the scene? Because it was only in the... Um, yeah, the work print. Was, like he literally announces, "Well, well, I'm not getting my way, so I'm done talking to you assholes." Like, right? Is that it? Something along those lines. They were having a conversation. He he does the line is something like that where he says, "Well, then I have nothing more to say here," and yeah. that was it. Yeah. How how far can you go from being like mysterious and have any mystique to you? Like <laughs> just saying, "Well, I'm I'm not getting my way, so I'm going to pout and just have a hissy fit for 15 years." Like that is bizarre, <laughs> man. What a choice. I guess that's why he left it out of the director's cut. I guess he <laughs> I guess so. You know? He said, "Eh, was it in the theatrical? I don't know. It's hard for me to say. I haven't I seen it." I don't, don't know. I don't know. But yeah. uh that that fucking nurse definitely I mean, she is asking for it. She says, "Oh yeah." cute baby couldn't be related to you and then turns her back on him like oh my god like you just instantly know something's going to happen right there mm-hmm. but yeah it you know that was definitely a highlight of of those scenes but he could have done that exact scene with somebody else you know somewhere else in the movie and just fucking you know and and kept the style of that but fucking scrap this shit i that's strange to me to hear hear you say that you don't mind this stuff dave because i just find no. it uh, just uh, bad, just bad. Mind-numbingly dull. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't mind the thing how they show how we how he got into the obsession with the masks, and I, and I don't mind how they showed that his mother, like Alex, was saying with the rose-colored glasses, and she was coming in and trying to act normal. And I don't know. It, it's kind of dramatic. I, like I said, it's a little bit a little long-winded, but I, I like the idea and I like some some of what they did with it. That's all. Let's yeah. talk about. Uh... Um, what's his name? Malcolm McDowell as Loomis. Now, do you guys like him in this role? Because you know, although he's no Donald Pleasance, uh, I still I really like him as the Loomis character, at least in this movie. Until uh, he delivers Loomis's lines. That's yeah, like. yeah, feels that's forced true. and fake, right? Yes. Yeah, when he says the lines uh, directly from the first movie, it none of them work. And uh, you know what's weird about that? Um, I say, if, and I guess we all agree, it feels forced and, and fake. Mm-hmm. What's weird about it is the guy never watched Halloween, so he wasn't even trying to imitate Loomis or anything. Like that's just it's just a regular guy reading a regular script to him. Hmm. It's because it's because we have those lines in our you know we've seen Halloween right. so many times we have those lines ingrained in our mind and Pleasant's delivering them that way when anybody else does it you know it's just. It, definitely a pale imitation. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I think it's a good uh, acting performance, but not as Loomis. If that makes any sense to you, I think he be he's, he was a, he was a good actor. He brought what he brought to it, but just not in that role. I just don't like, when he says things that you're used to hearing Loomis mm-hmm. say. I just I don't know. I I, I see. I think the first time I like I, I saw this movie, I, I was actually quite impressed with this performance, except for a few lines. But um, the last couple of times I watched it, I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me anymore. How about the fucking line at the end? The fucking uh, worst. Is that the boogie man? As a matter of fact, I do believe it was. Yeah. What the fu- That's a facepalm moment right there. Uh, oh my yes. god. Why don't you just fucking <laughs> go to Carpenter's house, fucking shit in your hand, and fucking start throwing poop on, at his fucking window, dude. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. What the yeah. fuck? As a matter of fact... I do believe that it was. Oh my god, that just ah, oh. <laughs> it's fucking horrible. Man. Oh man, and, and and I don't know. Did did uh did Scout say twas the boogeyman this time? I don't know. <laughs> the... Hey, Mikey, how you doing? Look, can't let those walls get you down. Believe me, I know. I spent a little time behind walls. I know they can drive you crazy. You, you gotta look beyond the walls. You know, learn to live inside your head. Hey, there's no walls that can stop you there. All right, I, I gotta get back to work. Right, take it easy, Mikey. Flash forward 15 years later, 
Uh, when does that put this movie? Because it's always kind of a weird thing with Zombie and his movies. They all look like they take place like in the seventies. Yeah. But if is if yeah. I, I think I think the I think the graphic at the beginning said uh, it was nineteen eighty one. I thought and there was no year. No, actually. I went back and looked because at first what I thought is, it said seventy eight, which okay. would put, put this movie in ninety three, and I guess it would kind of make sense except for the cell phones. But no, I went back and looked. Uh, last night or the night before when I watched it and I wanted to make sure and there's fucking nothing yeah, but what? it's weird there's nothing and the thing is you think it's the 70s because he's into Kiss and the music he's playing and, and they do the Don't Fear the Reaper thing uh, with Judith and just everything it's fucking oh, dude, the long hair they have 8 tracks the, uh, they have records on the floor uh, do they? I didn't notice 8 tracks and yeah. records but yeah dude and, and and think about it Um, when when uh, Deb whatever the mom's name is Meyer's mom when when she's watching the videos and she kills herself, she's watching a fucking projector screen. Like who? It's not even a VCR with tapes. Like they went all the way back to projectors. Oh, you're right. Who has yeah. that? That's true. And here's mm. what I noticed in part two. I know I'm going ahead, but for timeline's sake, um, what's her name? Lori in part two is wearing a fucking kiss shirt and has like Alice Cooper on her wall and shit. Mm-hmm. So it's like they're all stuck in the same fucking realm, except <laughs> they have cell phones. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> makes yeah, no that's, fucking sense. That's yeah. just that's just zombie style. I mean, it. You know, obviously, I guess that's when he grew up, so you know he has an affinity towards that, and I understand that. But it's also when you leave it that vague and ambiguous, then you're, you're going to leave it to people like us to just sit there and find a crack and then peel. You know, just hmm. po- poke peel at it back. the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, we'll get into that later. Jesus. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but even know. even Loomis says it to the grave digger. He goes, oh, don't you just, can I use your cell phone? And the guy goes, I don't have one. They call us brain tumors or something. But just <laughs> yeah. it seems like modern society where you expect everyone to have a cell phone. Mm-hmm. You know, can I can I use your cell? And the guy goes, oh, I don't have one. Goes, oh, so I don't know. That's yeah. that's one big fucking slip of the banana on this and part two. It really is. And mm-hmm. before we jump, uh, Matt, if you don't mind, real yeah. quick, back to the suicide scene. Uh, another great, great mm-hmm. choice in filmmaking, man. Did you notice that she she pulled the trigger as soon as um what she was watching Michael was getting some kind of award and she was like so proud of him and that's exactly where she pulled the trigger like she wow. wanted that image you no know, right to the bitter end she wanted him to be what she thought he was not what he really is hmm. fuck it that's heavy man <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I fucking zoned out for a little bit because I have no recollection of her uh, committing suicide in a scene. I'm, I'm I'm serious, and you guys are talking about. It and I'm like, what the fuck? In fact, it, it didn't even it didn't even register to me that she was dead until I started watching part two, and I'm like, oh yeah, she's fucking dead. How did she die? You know, and so wow, I guess I went and took a leak or something. Fucking, oh, it's, that it's shit. such such an emotional fucking scene too. Yeah, oh my wow, God. I don't know. Did you know Judith Myers was dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, no shit. <laughs> oh uh, shit! Well, how about fucking Danny Trejo in this movie? I I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great character actor, definitely. Uh, you know, Danny Trejo is awesome, and him in this role is kind of, uh, it, it's you know, you really feel for him because obviously he's been yeah. with Michael this whole time, and he's kind of befriended him, so to speak. And apparently, he's been giving him fucking protein powder in every single one of his sandwiches because this guy is a beast. Holy shit! Wow. Oh my god! I mean, I, I I love the aesthetic of him being that big. I think Tyler Maine is like six foot nine, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. which uh, is crazy to me because I'm six foot six, so I'm already a tall guy. So somebody that's that much bigger than me uh, just seems just blows my fucking mind. But yeah, he definitely beefed up. It's Ooh. crazy. Holy shit! You know, he was a wrestler, fucking in WCW in the early nineties. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he went by the name of Big Sky, and he fucking teamed with uh, <laughs> Big Kevin Nash before fucking when when he was like Vinny Vegas in the early nineties. Huh. Yeah, I yeah, no idea. it's fucked up. I I just read that the other day. I was like, what the fuck? But he is a monster in every sense of the word. He's a fucking he's tall, six nine, and fucking I don't know what his weight is, but holy fuck! It's oh, just uh, shock I knew, I knew his weight. Uh, in in the movie, he's two fifty. And when he wrestled, he was 380, believe it or not. What? Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. 
Oh he my said he slimmed God. down to 250 for this movie. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, if he was that big, it would be fucking just, uh, you know, that would just look terrible, I think. You know, he, sh- he, sh- you know he shouldn't be ripped, you know, because I don't think he's working out. Yeah, He'd be like Fed Jason in fucking part six and then the forest scenes. You know? Oh, God, yeah. With the daytime shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, but how about yeah. Danny Trail, what he tells mm-hmm. him? I thought I wanted to point this out. He tells Michael, he goes, you got it, Mikey. Hey, Mikey, you know, <laughs> I spent some time in, in, you know, behind bars. But then he goes, uh, you got to look beyond the wall, he tells him. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I thought that was cool. That's a nice little yeah. callback exactly. uh, to what Just Loomis says in the original. Yeah, it definitely was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Words of wisdom by a fucking janitor or whatever he was. <laughs> 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 no shit. He knows, but he's doing that job. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Hey, he's lived, man. He's lived life. Uh, so, yeah, okay. Now we're introduced to Giant Michael. Uh, we see his fucking uh, room full of masks. You know, he's fully embraced mask culture and paper mache and all this stuff. Uh, and uh, you know that. You know, I get what they're trying to do. It's obvious. You know, he even says it when he's a kid. You know, he's like, "I want to hide behind the mask and all this stuff." Yeah, because he hide his ugliness, which he should. <laughs> no, yeah, I, mean, I don't mean to attack a kid's looks, but Jesus Christ, that kid's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Uh, and and then we're introduced to some other characters. Uh, you know, other guards or whatever they are, and our janitors or what the fuck, but. Uh, and, and these are some more just fucking nasty characters that Rob Zombie loves to put in his movies. And these yeah. actors are great. I love them. Uh, but, yeah, they are just some of the slimiest guys in the world. They come in, and uh, we saw the director's cut, so we get the, the rape scene, uh, which the theatrical, I believe, has an entirely different kind of breakout thing. Do you guys know what that is? Yeah. Um, they're walking down a hallway, and uh, I think uh, Bill Mosley's in it, too. Yeah, and he's one of the guards. Oh, no shit. Oh, okay. That's his part. Yeah. They're all walking down the hallway. Like, there's like four guys surrounding him. I think they're bringing him to his hearing or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, he just, you know, decides to smash him against the wall. And then he just uncuffs himself and just walks out. And here's the other thing about that that's interesting. Uh, I don't really recall what happened to Danny Trejo. I believe he wasn't one of the guys escorting him out. So he just, he lives. He never gets murdered. <laughs> and then they went back. And they asked Treo to come back like three months after the movie was wrapped, and they shot that scene where he uh, stuffs his head in the water. Really? Yeah, huh. that, that wasn't originally supposed to be there. Yep. See, and I, I guess I guess he kills um, Danny Trejo's character, and you're supposed to really understand that at this point in time, Michael is has is no humanity or something yeah. like that. He right? has allegiance yeah. to no one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, which is strange because, uh, I mean, is is what's you know let's let's talk about is his motivation for the end of the movie to kill Lori, it uh, or does he want to be a part of a family again? Is that what he's trying to get back to? It is his goal to kill her. I don't know. It's bizarre because yeah. she, you know, he try he tries to show her. He shows her the picture, and she's yeah. like, "I don't know who that is." So he he kills everybody else, well except mm-hmm. Daniel Harris, which is ridiculous. But we'll get to that when we get to it. But he kills everybody else that's in his fucking way. And well, then and just... Loomis, he doesn't fucking kill Loomis. Well, yeah, yeah, well, he doesn't yeah. have no mercy on him, right? But anyway, yeah. he gets to her and he's showing her pictures and shit, and taking her hostage, and you know, whatever, doing all that shit. And it seems like he does want to be with her. Let me ask you guys this though: I was thinking about this the other day, watching it. Do you think? This would have been a better movie if they completely ignored the sister angle, like the yes, sh- yeah, right, yeah. Because uh, whenever you pointed out that he uh, that they're siblings right off the bat, yeah, then then when you get into the carpenter stuff, it kind of makes no sense, right? Uh, because he, he how would he fucking okay? He how has the find her, number he, one. He has the psychic right. link that he exactly. Yeah, she really finds him. I mean, she drops the stuff off at the house. He's just there. He fucking sniffs her fucking scent, and and <laughs> then they your panties. <laughs> yeah, no, he's <laughs> he smells the envelopes that that she drops off, 
And, uh, you know, all of a sudden the psychic link is fucking, you know, back. Yeah, well, that's, I mean. (laughs) That's stupid, man. It is stupid. It is stupid, and it's really played upon in in part two. They're completely psychically linked. Oh, that's hard. They're calling back from freaking, why would you call anything back from part five? Jesus Christ. (laughs) Talk about taking elements from a shit pile to add to your movie, man. Like, what is that all about? They're psychic? Mm Mm-hmm. Jeez. Yeah, I'm surprised at this rate he doesn't have like a fucking thorn symbol on his fucking wrist. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. Why stop there? Why stop yeah. at part five? Hey, buddy. Let's give you a heads up. I got a Taco Deluxe Supreme talking back at me. So I'm going to be a while. So do you mind waiting somewhere else and let me pass this beast in peace? Look, brother, if you're looking for some kind of action, you better take it on the arches before I'm done dropping this load. Or you're going to be one sorry a-hole. I see. What we got here is failure to communicate. You just hold on, Daisy. Got something for you. Let me introduce myself. I'm Joe Grizzly, bitch. I'ma cut that mask right off your face. Uh, we get a great scene and another great character. I love this character, Joe Grizzly, played by Ken Foray. <laughs> this whole scene. Uh, I just love it the way you know the way he he's an asshole but he's like a cool kind of asshole you yeah. know and it, it's just a scene primarily to get Michael into some new clothes and that's it but <laughs> but the the lines he has and his delivery you know uh, you know we were saying them earlier it, it's just great and it just puts a smile on my face every time I see this one particular scene. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, that was brutal too. When he kept smashing yes. his hand. Oh, here's a little inside tip on that. When he was when he grabbed his hand and he kept smashing it against that stall, and then you see like there was a like some kind of poster and a glass frame on the other side of it, and mm-hmm. it actually smashed. That was awesome that they added that. And uh, what's cool about that whole scene is that when they did that, they had uh, they made stalls that were designed to be broken and shit like that and I, I don't know why it wasn't used on, on the first take I don't, I'm not really sure what it was all about how they their sh- shooting technique or whatever but they never used them because those guys really did that to real stalls holy shit <laughs> yeah Wow, I was thinking that too. It looked fucking I'm like holy shit that looks realistic as hell mm-hmm. and wow yeah that makes sense mm-hmm. holy wow, fuck that's awesome. it is realistic uh, I'm surprised they didn't fuck themselves up doing that. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Right? Yeah, you would think. Fucking you're slamming somebody's anything against, even if a guy's, even if Tyler Maine's using his own hand and just punching it. I mean, what the fuck? They're, they're, yeah, I wonder if they just made that up to add some mystique to the movie. Like, I, I don't know, but that's, uh, hmm. that's really wow. weird. Yeah. But it's, it's great. Cool. And brutal is the word. It's fucking completely brutal, and it's a. a a great thing. It's the first kill. Well, that's the part of me. It's not the first kill, but it's. I remember seeing that at the theater the first time and going, "Fucking, that's great." Michael's badass again. I haven't felt this way about him in years. Where he's fucking a force. I don't know. It just mm-hmm. that kind of put it over the edge. Now, after he kills Joe Grizzly, he steals his clothes, I, I, and and he, <laughs> and he, he he's he's heading home. He's going home to Haddonfield. Yeah, they fit crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and there's no blood or cuts from the knife on him or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Co- uh. Continuity. Uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, I had to wonder right off the bat, and this is an element that I think Zombie <laughs> was very smart to take out of his movie because once he kills Ken Foray, I'm thinking instantly, oh, he's going to steal the semi and drive that to Haddonfield. <laughs> but nope. Nowhere in this movie or the next movie do, does Michael fucking drive a car. He's fucking wandering around fields. He's walking his ass off. He's like fucking, you know, Jesus and the apostles wandering the earth or whatever. And fucking, uh, he does not drive a car. I think that was very smart of Zombie because 
You know, he, even H two O, he drives from fucking Illinois to California. <laughs> the guy is driving all over the place. He took the interstate. No, I, I think I, I want to talk about one thing too. When in most remakes, I, I don't think any remake in the world uses the same exact music from its original movie. So, what do you guys think about uh, that classic music laid over a movie film today in this style? How do you how do you think that worked? Mm, I think it half worked, and I think when you hear it, you know, it triggers something in you, and it gives you that feeling that you get from the classic movie, uh, but at the same time, you're right. It doesn't necessarily go with the same tone yeah. of, of this movie, and I think that really shows once you watch part two, and it has none of none. this fucking right. music, and you're like, okay, that makes more sense for this style of movie. So it works and it doesn't. I think mostly, you know, it, it could do without it and be fine. Right. But we're happy to hear it at certain moments because yeah. it, it, it harkens it. back to something else. That's just it. I enjoy it. And uh, we know we had to do it. It was part of the, you know, he was contractually obligated to. For, for oh, the, was he? Yeah, he had to do certain things that the studio wanted him to do. That's why part two was part two and he had complete control over it. Yeah, it was finally back to, yeah. Yeah, it was a different movie. But the first one, he had to do certain things, you know. Mm -hmm. But I enjoy it. You know, good music's there. Yeah, he doesn't overkill it. It's not throughout the whole movie. It's just in a couple parts, and it's like, all right. I don't know. I guess nostalgic for us, but it it, it feels, I I enjoy it when it's on the screen. Hmm. You know, first time I heard it, I liked it. So it doesn't bother me. And I'm not sure if it's the actual same thing. I think it might be a fucking. Uh, I don't think it's an exact reproduction. I think it's done o- done over by some. No, it else. is done over. It is okay. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. I kind of feel like um, it didn't. You know how like sometimes a score feels like it's 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 embedded in the movie itself and the sounds within the movie, and then other times it sounds like something's being played over something. Mm-hmm. I feel like uh, I feel like this is just being played over scenes. I. I for most of the time, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's all right. It don't matter. It's, anyway. it's, it's not atmospheric because they're not doing it the whole movie, and they couldn't do it the whole movie. Otherwise, it's a complete fucking ripoff of the original. Nobody does that. Yeah. So I guess they just kind of did it. But I think if it flowed that way through the entire movie, it, it stands out because it's, it's used so, you know, so sparingly. Yeah, right. I think I think you said the right word, Dave. Is atmospheric. Uh, I mean, the first Halloween movie is fucking like the, the king of at creating atmosphere. Yeah. And whereas this movie has almost none of that, you know, it's stylistically is so different. So I, I think that's, that's the key right there. Why this music worked then, but not necessarily now, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but you talked about music and then the next fucking scene, there's a great piece of music when we're introduced to the Strodes yeah. and they play Mr. Sandman yes. again. That is mm-hmm. awesome. That I, I I loved bringing that back because I loved uh, the bookend use of that music from part True. two and and using it at the beginning of H two O. I think it worked great. And so having it here, I you know was nice. I really liked that. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. I also like Love Hurts too. That was a great use yes. of that, that too. Oh yeah, yeah. You saw the uh like the juxtaposition of her dancing uh and then Michael just sitting on the stoop, you know, all sad and stuff like that. Yeah, that that did work really good. And yeah. jumping ahead to the end of part two when they did it. I thought it yep. was wonderful how they how they fit you know, how it all fit in. But so, how about the introduction of the strolls? I gotta tell you mm-hmm. something. I do not fucking like Lori right off the bat. With that nope. shit, with the donut and all that shit. Lori's supposed to be the good girl and the one you identify with. You know, I'm not going to give a whole spiel, but Lori's supposed to be the good girl. It's mm-hmm. typical fucking shit. Lori Strode from, from 78 Halloween. That's Lori Strode. She should not be fucking acting like that. I'm immediately turned off to her character, her first fucking 30 seconds on the screen. And that's the beginning of the end, really, for the movie for me. Bitches! Hey. Oh, thanks for waiting for me. Whatever, hurry your ass up. <laughs> God. God. Hey, I heard about your little cheerleading incident. Yeah, I'm totally famous. <laughs> You're totally a slut. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, today in class, in French class, Mr. Leclerc was totally flirting with me. Oh, yeah. We were go. conjugating the verb <laughs> to want. Because he so uh, wants you. Oh, yeah. She's the. <laughs> Holy God. Pierre Leclerc. Pierre Leclerc wants me. I feel like he's watching us. 
What what? guy? The guy over there. Yeah. So I'm outside oh, school geez. earlier. Oh, no, it's just... some pervert cruising school poontang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Watch this. Watch this. Hey, hey, freak. Hey, freak. You want some of the young stuff? You like hey. that? Well, come and no. get it. Hey. Stop. Hey, asshole. Hey, my daddy's the sheriff. Huh? Why don't you go crawl back under your fucking rock? <laughs> See, I told you. I'm just a stupid fucking pervert. Total pervert. Gosh, you guys are crazy. That guy could have been dangerous. Oh, God. Whatever. What is he going to do? I don't know. It's weird. Rob Zombie has this weird, he has a weird vision of the world. He believes that, uh, like, everybody has this edginess to him. Like, if you look at this yeah. movie, like, <laughs> everybody has edginess. Um, even the little kids mm -hmm. have, have oh, this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fucking, uh, uh, what's Tommy Doyle? He's got, like, some zingers, man. He's got yeah. all these one-liners and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, everybody yeah, is fucking amped up. You're right. Huh. Everyone. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, when you get right. to that, like, I don't know, man. It takes away from who is edgy. Because if everyone's edgy, well, then what yeah, are we no doing is, here? Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. no one is. They're just a bunch of assholes. And, and this really, oh, God, the fucking worst line. I don't oh. know if you guys, if this, if you guys picked up on this, man, the, the, by far the worst line of this movie is fucking Annie when when they I guess I, they don't show him uh, in the, the in the any cut that I have but they're looking at him on this in the street I guess and she goes hey hey asshole my yep. daddy's the fucking sheriff so why don't yep. you crawl into your fucking rock like yeah. I was like what am I watching here I knew this, you were gonna say that <laughs> dude, I agree hundred oh. percent yeah it definitely sounds like some of those. Uh, stuff you were talking about where they're just making up their own lines and stuff yeah. like that. And, it, it, you know, when the girls are walking down the street, uh, the only part that made me smile or laugh uh, was when uh, 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 Linda says, uh, totally, totally, there at the end. That <laughs> yeah, was that's nice. Good. I like that. But just... other than that, yeah, this the whole scene with these girls, you know, is – I mean, and she's saying I, cunt and C U N T. Like, oh. yeah. mm -hmm. what am I? Like, this is really like this guy's really trying too hard. Yeah, to <laughs> make these people like you know. He overplays that fucking card way yeah. too much. I don't think he does it every single movie. I don't think he did with Lord of Salem, but uh, I think he does just does that with every other fucking movie, and that's a knock on him. You know, and he does not know how to wrap up his movies, and I'll get to that. Moment. Yeah, you're right. He doesn't, right? He's the Stephen <laughs> King of fuck. Stephen King is the best author that's ever lived. However, he has one flaw: he does it. not know how to fucking wrap up his stories. You Remember know? it, <laughs> the fucking yeah. spider that comes out. Like, oh, where, what God. does this have to do with that goddamn yeah. clown? <laughs> Listen, I've read fucking uh, thirty of his books, and I've seen the movies and everything. He that's his biggest knock, for whatever reason. Nobody's perfect, and that's his flaw. Act. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's like they all of a sudden. It's like, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, no, I interrupted you. Well, no, I was just gonna say real quick that that what what do you guys think about um the the difference? Lori is in basically the, the opening scene. Uh, if you get rid of the uh, you know the thing before the credits in the original, um, she comes out in the opening scene and drops the key off. And in this movie, she she don't show up till almost uh, pretty much the third act. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that's. that's yeah, definitely Gosh. different, and and yeah, that goes back to what I said about this being Michael's movie, you know, and uh, you know he's definitely the main character, and so everyone else takes a back seat. Even uh, what should be really the you know protagonist of the movie, you know, and she shows up so late in the game, it's kind of yeah, well, it's just too long of a movie. That should all be trimmed down, definitely. Yeah. I can't and even people would argue. what it looks like now. The theatrical. Because this is a two-hour movie, and the, the the last act still seems rushed. You know. Yeah, yeah. And, and people might be going, "Hey, moron! She was in the, you know, the beginning. She was the baby crying." But I, I'm not talking about that. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, she's not a real character at that point. Yeah, um, yeah. All her lines were terrible in the beginning. Jesus. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, but all this stuff where we're where we got to introduce all these new characters now. So quick, uh, right. Yeah, really <laughs> fast, you know. But at the same time, I think he feels like he can do it really fast because you essentially already know all these characters. He's making this movie 
like you have the knowledge of the Carpenter movie. Right. He should not have fucking done that. He yeah. should have made his own. He should have fucking made it like a real movie that people have no knowledge of the previous movie or any of the sequels. And then it, they would have been more fleshed out. And we wouldn't have hated all these characters. I don't know if you guys hate them, but I think most of them are pretty bad. I hate and them. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't work. You don't fucking care for any of these kids. And, you know, it's like, yeah, Michael, just kill him. I don't give a shit. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> fucking very good. That's uh, That is the problem. That mm-hmm. he expects us all to uh, know the characters because being such big fans of the original that he doesn't. That's Yeah, I, I never thought of that, that, that being the reason, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that kind of makes even sense. even when uh, okay Loomis comes comes to town, uh, and he goes straight to the graveyard like he does in the original, <laughs> and we have almost the exact same scene, right. and it, and and I don't know about you guys, but I love Sig Haig and, and what he can do, but it just I would rather have the fucking the weirdo from the original Halloween yeah. in there, you know, <laughs> it just or Alex. Don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you ever hear my, uh, I try to get this role. What? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't remember try. that? Yeah, do it. Let's hear it. Let's hear the, the, you know the lines. Come on. Oh, I got there. It was like, uh, <clears throat> Judith Myers, Myers. Oh, yeah. God, About 17 talking. years ago, uh, <laughs> he excused himself from the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I had actually forgot about that. I just yeah. listened, to, listened to that the other day. <laughs> right. Alex, you go way overboard on the fucking laugh. It's oh. I, I barely even noticed that fucking little uncomfortable laugh, but you take that and you fucking <laughs> you ran it into the ground. It's great. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is good stuff. Oh, um, yeah, you're right about that. Fucking rushed and eh, fucking. I eh. mean, uh, th- and this is this is like uh, I don't know, ten, fifteen minutes of the movie. You know, Michael gets back to town. He goes and gets his mask. Uh, he gets his knife and all that stuff. He, he runs into Lori and just for whatever reason decides to follow her. And then we're introduced to all these characters. It's like ten, fifteen minutes, but really, it's like what you know, what the fuck happens here? I can't even. Re- recall what happens until we get to the night, you know, the nighttime. <laughs> it's just all so blah. You know what's yeah, weird it, about it? You know how people, the big complaint about horror movies is, oh, who cares? They just put any random assholes and you knock them off. Nobody gives a shit about these people. Um, you don't even know the characters. There's no character development. In this movie, although although it seems crammed and rushed, you do get a real taste of each person in in a way. Like, you know, it, you're familiar enough with who they are by the time they're getting killed, and even then we don't care. Like, that's what's bad about it. Like, the characters he created sucked. It's mm-hmm. it's not even about not developing a character. It's like the ones you developed all suck. Like, how could you be that bad at that? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, just, he's, just, he's just not good. I mean, he's good at writing caricatures. Char- uh, you got you know, caricatures, and and that's it. A real people, I don't think he can do. No, you and know? when you when you let him say whatever they want and improv the whole time, it's not going to be a. Re- that's not how you craft a character. Like letting them say what they want. Oh, yeah, terrible. Most people yeah. are idiots and dummies, and they can't come up with good shit like that. You know, you got to write that shit, man. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to the to the night, and it has a title card here that just fucking angered me. It, yeah. it, it says tri- <laughs> trick or treat, you know, it's yeah. like, oh my, get that fucking shit off the screen, <laughs> dude. I don't know what he was thinking or why that would be interesting to, yeah. you know, to transition to nighttime. You know, get the fuck out of here. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was so cool in the beginning when the movie started and it was just a black screen. Boom. <clears throat> Halloween. I love yeah. it. No, that was great. Yeah. Uh, then he did it again and again. Like, like you're watching the shining or fucking watching, you know what I mean? <laughs> A law and order. Dun dun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually he does it in the Lord of Salem with the days of the week. Just like in the fucking shining. Oh, See that's yeah, that's right. Hmm. Yeah, it was fine in the shining, you know, whatever. That that's another movie, but yeah, that trick or treat thing, that completely unnecessary and just fucking yes, a turn off. And that's and speaking of a turn off, you could just watch this movie and as soon as that comes off as soon as that part comes on the movie on the screen, trick or treat, you can turn your fucking T V off because it's 
It's done. Okay, this is this is where it goes south for you. Because for yeah. me, it's after you know, it's before he gets to Smith's Grove. I, I'll watch thirty minutes of this and turn it off. Yeah, and, and but for you, it's right here. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, I can you. tolerate it. I can tolerate it until then. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then then I am fucking utterly repulsed by the fucking from here on in. Are so, we are we so being cool. assholes? I don't know. I, no. I mean, do do people love this movie? I I really yeah. don't know. They Some do. do. I don't know. I don't. I think it's as split as uh, Texas Chainsaw and Friday the Thirteenth are and Evil Dead. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll say this: Rob Zombie was the perfect guy to shoot this movie and to st- and stylize it. I think that's good. Um, he, he should have lightened up a little bit on that on the language. I think it would be more universally uh, accepted. I just think he's not the right guy to marry the original story in today's world. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like, I, I said this before. I don't know if you guys remember. The way this movie should have should have been, it should have been, um, it should have been, uh, like, the opening kills and stuff. It should have been, like, a montage of everything. Car- oh, he could have had that. See, here's the thing, because I love the beginning so much, but I kind of wish that even if that, let's make, like, this movie never existed. He could have done a cool montage with great music and all the good action that went on in Carpenter's Halloween and condensed that into like a four minute montage and then mm-hmm. stopped it um, when, you know, they fall off the balcony and I guess she shoots him in the head. They could have changed that and made that happen. And then from mm-hmm. there, you pick up from there and and, and, and move then, forward mm-hmm. instead of recreating Carpenter's because I just don't think – I don't know. And it sounds dumb because – if you never seen Halloween, that would be stupid. Then, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's it's tough because uh, you know, with any kind of remake, uh, you know, Friday Thirteenth, it's like, what do you tell? You know, how true do you stay to the original, you know, source material, and what do you do differently? You know, it's it's a fine line, and uh, you know, doing it within, you know, in this day and age with you know, Blu-rays and you know, the internet and stuff like that. We can we can pick this shit apart. I mean, we're talking about on a fucking podcast. It's it's difficult. So yeah, yeah I guess I don't know. Great example, just like they did with Friday. Yeah, if you could do it there, you could do it here. With Friday Thirteenth remake, they didn't remake the first movie. They did what I just said, but even more condensed. They didn't show yeah. anything that went on. Mm-hmm. They should have yeah. done that here, and then the first Halloween should have been what Rob Zombie's Halloween Two was, and we wouldn't have that white horse bullshit because the mom wouldn't have ever been a huge central character. Mm -hmm. So there'd be no need to bring her back, or you wouldn't even think about her. So you could have had Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 with a little, you know, take away a few things here and there, but that could have been the original. Instead of trying to remake Rob Zombie's and making a cliche background to Michael and all that, I think that's how he should have went with this. But Hmm. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Hmm. I don't know. But uh, well, you know, let's talk about some of these kills here. <laughs> like we we get one that the, the Linda or Bob, Linda and Bob scene, and to me, this is fucking utter fucking trash because <laughs> he does the first of all they go to the they go to Myers house to fuck, which is different. <laughs> but it makes sense why Michael would want to kill him now. You know, yeah. fucking around in his house, so that makes sense. But at the same time, they do everything exactly the fucking same and it, carpenter was really pushing it with putting a sheet over michael's head you know that's very out of character but him doing it in this movie get the fuck out of here dude it just does not fucking work at all <laughs> I, 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 I don't know how do you guys feel about it the, the fucking worst part is the swerve I, I i do like this i like that he got the idea from bob that was kind of a cool twist on it that bob was doing it first and he grabbed him and fucking this way it, it shows where the idea may have come from. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, how fucking stupid is it that this six fucking foot nine monster comes back to fucking Linda in the bedroom and she <laughs> I doesn't didn't even realize think about that, yeah. She doesn't realize that it's not her fucking high school boyfriend who probably goes fucking what, five seven, five eight. Well no, guys, actually, uh sorry to break this, but uh they casted a guy who was almost as tall as Tyler Maine because of what? that. Yeah, really. He was actually like six foot five or something like that. Only f- I didn't realize it yeah. that he was tall. What the yep. fuck, really? Wow. Yeah, they deliberately did that. Yeah, and and here's here's the thing I think is weird about it. Do you guys do, or remember or know? Uh, I think in the, in the theatrical cut, the the Bob kill was not 
the ripoff of the original. It was completely different. Do you guys remember that? Because in he the picked theatrical? them up. Yeah, in the theatrical, it was t- huh, no. dude, it was horrible. Oh, he kills um, him in the car, doesn't he? Yeah. When he yeah. goes out to get the beer? Yep. Oh, no shit. Huh. He, he goes in the back of his van to get a beer. I don't know why it would even be there or whatever, but okay, I guess I, I forgot he had to a bring cooler. it in the house. He had a cooler. And he yeah, just, yeah. I don't know, probably wanted to get laid, didn't think about it, ran in the house. Let's go, come on, let's fuck. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and Michael just starts stabbing him in the van, and it was really bad, and it felt like, yeah. wow, that's what you... I don't know, man. But here's the other weird part. Once in in this cut, when they when he does the Bob kill and he stabs him against the wall, that is just it's not in character of this Michael. Mm-hmm. I don't think this Michael would have done that. Yeah, he he would have fucking he would have uh, stabbed him like twenty times. And, and that's what know? he did. Yeah. in the van. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That yeah that makes more sense. He's way more aggressive. Than yeah. uh, than Michael in the original movie right. ever was, yeah. So you okay? We got that. That's fucking trash. Yeah, uh, we get. Um, I like that he's listening to Hollow the song by the Misfits while they're fucking going at it. Mm-hmm. While they're going at it, the song that's playing is the Misfits, and it's fucking the song is Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. Halloween. <laughs> 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 he does good shit in this movie like that. He he does the thing like Carpenter did as a nod to that. And he plays fucking uh, the, the the movie also White Zombie is playing in the background and that of course was his first band, so right he does some yeah he does some cool little uh, yeah things. but do, do you guys feel like he dropped the ball with the thing wouldn't I, wouldn't it have been a brilliant move to do Carpenter's yes, remake yes yes why didn't he fucking show the remake that makes yeah. ah that would have been so yeah. perfect because yeah. you would have been tipping your hat to John Carpenter get the fuck out of here come on right and, it's yeah. so obvious yeah. What the uh, fuck? Great call. It didn't. It didn't even occur to me. Yeah, wow. dude. And oh, it's, that, it's that, obvious. You're right. Well, it actually. Yeah, it actually pissed me off because it's like you're fucking. You're, as you know. I know you're making a remake, but all this is a pale comparison to Carpenter's movie. It, the least you could do is is throw that in there. You know, it's not like <laughs> right. a Carpenter probably never even watched this fucking movie, but still, you yeah. know, it, for for us, you know. <clears throat> but anyways, right. So, uh, fucking, uh, then what, what the fuck happens? He kills Annie Brackett's boyfriend and she almost dies and, uh, you know. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, it just, none of this works for me at all. I mean, I like, I like the fact that we see, uh, Daniel Harris's tits and, and Linda's tits and stuff like that, but that's all I'm getting out of these scenes. That is it. Uh, the the kills are lackluster at this point. I, I think it's because we just don't care about these characters. We've seen this before in the original movie. Uh, at this point in the movie, I'd, I, I would turn it off. If yeah. I wa- if I wasn't watching it for this show, I would have turned this shit off. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Checked out. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, just it's not a, working. One one cool little scene, uh a throwback to the original when um Michael was standing behind Lindsay watching T V. Yes. If you guys notice the the reason he watches the T V is because um when he kills Ronnie in the beginning of the movie, they're watching the thing and Michael Never really got to see how it ended, so he watched oh. the ending. Oh wow. no, shit! Interesting. Yeah, fifteen years later. Yeah, isn't that wow. weird? That's why he was so <laughs> into it. <laughs> no shit, that's fucked up. That's <laughs> fucked up. cool. That's a great observation. Wow. Oh wow, talking about a fucking delay, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've waited fifteen years for this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that man. was his whole motivation. He just wanted to see the end of the thing. <laughs> It's got to be playing on this TV this night. I know it. Let me go back to my old neighborhood. And fucking then, Halloween. Yeah, let's see that movie. <laughs> and, and then it's a letdown. He fucking hates it. He's like, oh, yeah, he's God like, damn yeah, it. That sucked. Yeah. Fuck. Then he fucking he comes off his game. He, he's, for some reason, he, he can't kill Danielle Harris. He lost his fucking touch. Yeah, yeah what's that all about? It's what fucking, is that about? Yeah, like, horrible. That's yeah. what it is. This movie just really falls apart. But um, yeah, I, I have to say right here, you know, we're talking about tits. And the banana I got appeal in this movie is Linda. She looks fucking. I mean, I I didn't really like her until I saw her naked. But then I'm like, wow, okay. It usually that, helps that, like a girl more. Yeah, that's the chick yeah. I'm going after in this movie. That's the one I'm gonna appeal. Wow, I'm I'm Daniel Harris all the fucking way. Uh, uh, yeah. I love the way she. I love she's talking dirty to him and shit. I I love it all. She. I mean, she's cute to begin with, and she's nice and you know she's fit, but. 
Uh, when she's, she's talking that shit to him on the couch, that's fucking. I like that dirty. <laughs> she's too short for me, man. Uh, she, she's like a midget to me. I can't nice fucking. I can't get with that. <laughs> yeah, well, me and Dave are a foot tall, shorter than you. So. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like I'm like Tyler Maine standing <laughs> next to her ass. Are you uh, a giant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think the banana I would peel. It, it's weird, man. Like looking at if I was like on top of Daniel Harris and looking at her face and stuff, and she was like fuck, you know all that. I would be totally into it, but I kind of feel like overall, if I had a real choice, I'd pick um, Michael's mom. Uh, mm. Yeah, I thought yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck, she is just she is I just do like her. Uh, she's In just dumb movie, to me. <laughs> But I know she's hot. Even yeah, though she yeah, exactly. wasn't hot in this, I know she is, so mm-hmm. I'd still go for it. I yeah. loved her in House of a Thousand Corpses. I thought she was all fucking hot in that. Well, yeah. You like the squeaky voice she does? Well, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mind it. I just liked everything about that movie. So whatever, right. that's just part of it. But to me, she was fucking genuinely hot in that. And, you know, kind of dirty in part two. So, but, but I do hear you about her. She, I, I do think she's attractive, but... Just yeah. like what you said, Alex, but just not in this movie as in other movies. So simply because of that, you know, Daniel Harris is me. But I hear where you're coming from. She, you know, no one denying she's hot. Yeah, she's definitely hot. And, you know, we talked about like not caring about the kills real quick. I just want to say they Zombie did attempt to make us care about these people dying because one one really eerie moment was when um, Michael is killing the the parents i guess yeah and while he's killing them you hear this like really fun nice answering machine they left you know, oh like, yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's funny yeah this message yep. yeah like what, and when you it's really kind of like wow man these people are like real people and they it's just th- that got to me man i'll tell you that now okay let's talk about their death now uh it, Michael, you know, they're sitting on the stoop. You know, Lori goes away to go babysit, and then uh, uh, the the parents are there, and, and Michael shows up, and and he goes inside, and we get one of the first shots that Zombie does again and again, and that's the uh, exterior of a house. Michael's inside and slams the door. <laughs> and we see that a million times, but yeah. then but then we go go forward and see the kill realized inside where he kills him now uh, and this is my thing about zombie not being able to be subtle you know he's got to show us absolutely everything wouldn't have been cooler if the door slams it cuts to the next scene and then later when bracket is trying to get in contact with him then we see the aftermath and we we don't actually see them being killed i think that would have been way more effective than seeing the actual acts, you know, happen. I don't think we have to see fucking everything. No. Mm. You're right. And the thing he wanted to do with that scene was show that he was looking for Lori because he mm-hmm. grabbed the picture and all that stuff. But who gives a fuck? We don't care about that by now. It's yeah, really. Stupid. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense. I mean, why he's even fucking looking. He wants to... I mean, who knows? It's, it, could he really realize that this is his fucking sister? It makes no sense. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, well, we forgot to talk about a, uh, what should be a sort of big role in this movie, uh, uh, Brad Dorf as uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Sheriff Brackett or whatever his name is. I, I got to tell you guys, man, I um, I don't think there was uh, – maybe I'm just stupid, but I don't think there's any chemistry at all between uh, Loomis and Brackett in this movie. I was just bored to tears with every line. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have <laughs> what the original – captured and i think that's just attributed to the actors having no chemistry yeah they had whatsoever none. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah it just didn't work and and really you know bracket has a much smaller role seemingly in this movie than the original i think that has to do with that and just the fact that you know the the last half of this movie is so kind of rushed and jammed together so mm. but i do love brad dorif i mean i think he's a great actor i think everything he does is is really good he's a great character actor and I think he's fine in this, but yeah, it just doesn't work bouncing off of Loomis. Nope, I agree, not. and he gets him so quick. Loomis barely has to have any selling points. He comes right in, he fucking hook, line, and sinker. Walks in, I don't even know what the fuck he says. He comes in there, oh yeah, well, uh, this Michael Myers cat's loose, and uh, we gotta go catch him. Next thing you know, they're fucking in a car together, and then you mm. have the whole story. Yeah, right? It's, it's completely glossed over. Loomis just walks in. Once again, like Matt said before, just because we've seen the original movie, that's what I think he's going for. We're supposed to just know the reason why, you know, this cat mm-hmm. walks into town and, and they're targeting Michael so quickly. 
you know. Well, then he tries to add a layer into it, and he and he says like, uh, "I know who you are. You're the the bigger monster you make, Michael. The more books are gonna sell." And, yeah. You know, they try to spin that thing, and it's like, I don't want to. Come on, let's just get on with the movie. Like, I don't even, I don't even want to see all this. Like, I don't know, man. It just wasn't working. Nothing they did with that. Work. Yeah. How about Mike stalking Lori on the sidewalk? I do like that. There's the one fucking thing when she's coming home right before her parents get whacked. And she's walking down the street, and you see Michael in the background. It was almost like something you'd see in part one. And then as she's walking, he's walking, like, parallel to her, and then he's stalking her. And then you see him. There's a shot where he's behind the tree in another scene. I thought he did that really well. Mm-hmm. I don't remember yeah. that. I remember the second one, though, when they when he's looking at their house. Uh, he did that, well, too. And that was but, cool. And how about in the, in the beginning in the library? How fucked up is it that Lori isn't even the one that notices him first? It's Linda. Yeah. She looks out the window, and it, they show her paying more attention to Michael than Lori, which makes no fucking sense, right? <laughs> and do you realize, about that scene, Michael is actually standing in the front of the original Myers house from 78. Yeah, right. That's true. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. and this was filmed in the same area of California. Pasadena. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. the when they were walking and babbling after school, that was yep. at the same street, I think, that they were walking on in the original. Mm-hmm. I think it was a different angle. But uh, I think it was definitely the same. It was the same blocks or something like that. Definitely the same place, yeah. Lori, watch. Is the boogeyman real? Why are you so obsessed with the boogeyman, Tommy? Well, I hear things at school. Like what? Well, I heard that on Halloween night, the boogeyman sneaks out and attacks kids who don't believe. Look under these tables. You know what, Tommy? It is true. He likes to eat little boys like you. Oh my god, you're fucking messy! You're never gonna die! Don't leave me get me! Hold that thought. It's not appropriate, babysitter behavior, huh? Lori. Uh, shut up. Michael fucking takes Lori back to his fucking house, you know, because why? I don't know. He wants to, you know, I talked about this. He wants to be a family again. Don't get it. Uh, she wakes up next to Linda. She's fucking freaking out as she should be. Uh, one thing that got a chuckle out of me, maybe you guys have some insight, is that next to Linda's dead body is a, ja- a fully fledged jack o' lantern with a candle in it and everything. So, <laughs> did Michael fucking make this? Is he trying to make a, a, a nice living space for for Lori to? I don't know. Yeah, that's just something that made me giggle. <laughs> yeah, like you know, in in the sequel to this, um, it's clear that. It's you know it's the writing's on the wall. He wants to uh, everyone to be dead to uh, reunite the family, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's one of those rare movies where uh, you know the killer gets his way sort of at the end. And and it, it's weird because um, in this one, what was his intentions? Just kill hit her foster parents and hang out in that grimy basement? Like what? <laughs> where did he think that was going to lead? Yeah, in, like, <laughs> I just don't know. No yeah, idea. Stupid. It's right. it's fucking. <laughs> None of this works. It just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and we... Uh, well, well, that's that's the sister angle, though. See, in the original, nothing was supposed to work. He was just supposed to kill her and her friends. Yes. In this one, you want to throw that bullshit in there. Now you got to find, well, where do we go? Well, he wants to be with her again. Like, you know, you have to come up with some stupid shit because you went with your sister angle. That's where you fucked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. It's painful, and the last twenty minutes, and that that chase is the worst fucking oh. final chase in any slasher movie ever. Bang Agreed. Oh my god, dude, oh, guys, yeah. seriously, I'm not bullshit, and it's not for like humor's sake. When I was in the theater and I was watching this for the first time, and he was taking that two by four and hitting the ceiling, going after her, that went on so long. I seriously just started looking around the theater, and I I wanted to leave. <laughs> Like, I really said, I, I don't want to watch this. This is mm-hmm. terrible, and I, this is, like, I don't want to watch. I want to go home. But then I said, I can't do that because I have to be able to talk about it and know what is, you know, I have to see how this ends. I yeah. wanted to leave. It was that yeah. bad. It was so anticlimactic, it's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, it just keeps going and going <sighs> and going. And she, like, she gets out of the house. She falls in the pool. Uh, Loomis shows up. She, you know, he goes... Uh, they, they go to the car. Michael shows back up. She goes back into the house. It's like fucking just cut out fifteen minutes of this. You don't need all of this. It's crazy. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, 
we've been going so hardcore this whole time. It's like this is not exciting anymore. You've blown your fucking load already. Like it, there's nothing exciting about this. Uh, you know, yeah, it's almost like a girl saying, "Do you want to have sex again?" Like twenty minutes after you did, and you're like, "No, yeah. not really." Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I'm good. yeah. <laughs> no. But uh, so you know, the the chase continues throughout the house. Uh, one little thing that I, I kind of liked was uh, right before the ending, uh, they both fall off the balcony together, and yeah. I guess that was kind of a nod to the original of that happening, of him <laughs> falling, being shot off the balcony. Um. You know, when I saw this the first time at the theater, when that happened and the screen went black, I was hoping the credits were going to roll right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that like, oh. would have been a better ending. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I abs- <laughs> well, you just, you just want it to be over. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, ex- it's excruciating to sit through this. It's not exciting. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, oh, thank God. It's finally over. <laughs> like. I, it was I'm, bad, man. It was bad. I'm sorry. I don't understand why people like this movie. I mean, don't okay. Uh, fucking Michael looks great. His fucking the look of him is great. He's fucking intense. If you want brutality, you're gonna get that, you know. But sort of, you, yeah. you know. I think here I understand people liking bits and pieces, but people who like this movie from beginning to end, I don't get you guys, man. No, I uh, think they're <laughs> I think they're wrong. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're uh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, they fall off, and then we get the, I guess the the extra ending of her blasting Michael in the face. You know, she, somewhere along the line, she got Loomis's gun, mm. and uh, you know she's sitting there, <laughs> you know, trying to shoot him. And even my girlfriend, you know, she's sitting there uh, pulling the trigger, and it's just clicking. And even my girlfriend was like, "What does this bullet only have three? Or this gun only have three bullets in it? Or so, you know, like what the fuck?" She's like, "I thought you could have at least six. Like I shot him six times." Yeah, yeah. exactly. And how yeah. about that? Like he couldn't even let us get out of the theater. Like we had to sit there while she kept pulling blanks. Like can you just let her shoot the goddamn. Yeah, like, and, and we know it's going to happen. Just fucking yeah. do it. Yeah, like, uh, we're, there's no suspense. Like, I guess, yeah, I guess that, you know what, maybe that was good writing. Like, the suspense was, maybe there's no bullets in it, I guess. I guess that was good. But at that point, you just want to leave it. And I, I guess the one interesting thing is when he grabs her arms, he, you wonder if it's, like, just kill me, or did he grab her and then just, like, lose the energy to, to move her arms away? Mm-hmm. Or like, what? Like I don't know. W- was he suicidal at that point, where he held the gun to his head? Yeah, I think Michael, yeah, it's like, you know, how much tunnel vision does he have? You know, does he just want, you know, want to get Lori in some way? And it's like, at that point, does he realize, you know, fuck, you know, fuck this. It's not worth it. Just fucking get get rid of me, you know? Fuck, who knows? Yeah, who who the fuck knows? We're putting way too much thought into it at the end here. <laughs> yeah, I've been checked out since Trick or Treat, you know? <laughs> yeah. Since this green. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's talk about our favorite kills, the fucking banana split. Uh, mine is easily goes back to the beginning of the film, and that's that's the Ronnie throat slit. Mm. Uh, it, you know, it's like the first, uh, I don't, I don't want to say real kill, kill because it, it's not, but it's the one that means the most, I guess. I don't know. It's just uh, I, I have an affinity, as I found out doing this podcast, of throat slits, and when they're done well, I just I'd love them. They're so simple, so effective, and yeah, that that's mine for this flick. What do you guys think? Well, I've said it before, and I, I've said it again. I'm also fucking big on the throat slits. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I point them out every time I see them. This when they're done right, they're great, and um, that is a great kill. As uh, the first three kills in the house are great. The bait, the aluminum bat, the slit, and fucking Lori's death are all really good. I think. Mm-hmm. But Judith, and it's really what's that? Judith, you mean? What did I call her? Lori. Yeah. What the fuck, Judith? Yeah. I guess it was too You didn't kill the baby. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice. Yeah, right? that would have been <laughs> fucked up. Holy yeah, shit. that would have been a better movie. You can lose that whole fucking angle. You know? <laughs> he just chases random kids, you know? Mm-hmm. But I think those two chicks look alike. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I, it, It's really close because I like them all, but I'm going to go with the throat slit as well just because... You know, I, I I always do like them. I think I cringe more when I see the aluminum bat death. It's like, oh man, ah. You but, feel every smack with that. Bat. Yes, yeah. yes, you do. Yeah, but seeing the throat slit is always a fucking. I'm always, uh, you know, I'm into that. It looks good. So, 
yeah, I'll stick with that. Ronnie's death is the uh, the banana split for me also. Yeah, I think uh, he was definitely um, channeling uh, Corey Feldman with the aluminum bat kill. <laughs> How he just kept on swinging the bat towards probably nothing on the floor. Uh, so, but but yeah, uh, to, I would I think I'm see to me, man, those three kills kind of like meld together. I kind of like them as a combo package, and mm-hmm. uh, I the aluminum bat. I think what really plays well there is the sound design, like the bat hitting the floor. Like you feel it on the bones of your head, man. When you when you hear that bat hit the floor, and you like like uh, when you said you could picture it uh, happening to you. Um, Judith Myers was great because when he stabs her and she she grabs the knife and he pulls it through her fingers like Norman Bates in Psycho Two. Oh that you know, and the way he follows her down the hallway and that music, it was so it's so well done that it's hard to like just overlook that. I. I I'm going to go with the Judith Myers just for that mm-hmm. hallway scene. I just think that was great, man. Mm-hmm. The slow mo and the music, and it was like a variation of that dun, dun, dun. dun. It was like different. I don't know what was different about it, but it was different. And that it's just great. really, yeah, it really just affected me. So I'm going to, I'll go with Judith Myers as the best kill. Hmm. Yeah, all three, all three of those kills. If, you know, if we each picked one of those kills, I, I'd be satisfied with that because that, that like you said, that sequence of all of them, yeah. you can't go wrong with that, any of those three kills for different reasons, and they're all great. Yep, it's like a perfect song, the perfect intro, the perfect uh, chorus, and the perfect uh, uh, whatever. It's perfect, right? So yeah, let's. I guess all that's left to do is fucking narrate this uh, uh, thing. We just uh, narrated it. <laughs> Rob Zombie's uh, Halloween. Uh, I. I don't like this movie. There has a lot of it has a lot of interesting stuff that I do like. Um, you know, uh, stuff that he changed, stuff that he didn't change. Uh, but overall, as a cohesive movie, this does not work. Um, and I think we clearly stated why throughout this uh, mm. throughout this show. So uh, I got to give this a two for I do not like it, and I don't even recommend this to people. I say stick this <laughs> up your crack. I say, if you want to watch a Halloween movie, there's fucking better movies out there. If you want to watch a Rob Zombie movie, there's a better movie out there. Don't watch this. You know, there's no reason to watch this. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Fucking, I also say two stars. I thought about two and a half, uh, but by the time I finished watching it, and after tonight's discussion, fucking, yeah, it's out two. Two is, is all I could say. And, uh, yeah, fuck it. Stick it up your crack, of course. Of course, mm-hmm. what can you, just like what you said, better zombie movies, much better Halloween movies, and yeah, right. fuck that I, shit. <laughs> I, I was teetering on two and a half. Um, I, th- I just love, uh, I love Tyler Maine. I love the casting of Little Michael. I love the first thirty minutes. The kills are spectacular. Uh, there's some some cool imagery, you know. After I guess the. And I love the nurse kill. So it's hard to say when you love some like some things that much, can you, write. you just write it off? It's hard for me to say just like didn't like it, but I really don't like it. Mm-hmm. And I only watched it like three times. Um, although those the casting's great, and there's some great imagery and some great filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Really, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, it's I just what could have been. Yeah, movie. I yeah. just don't think it it um it eventually led to a good movie. So yeah. Uh no, I guess I don't like it. It's a, I give it a two. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this was like the fourth time I think watching this, and I own it on DVD. I'll probably never watch it again. Uh, the only reason I might is to listen to Rob's commentary because he is a super intelligent guy. Uh, it's very fascinating to listen to him talk about filmmaking and stuff like that. Very very intriguing. But to sit down and watch this movie, I you know I'll, I'll watch clips. You know, mm-hmm. give me that. I don't want to watch the entire movie again, no. Would you consider, um, you know, I'm the Halloween October guy. I don't know if you could do that if you save him for October. But mm-hmm. uh, would would you consider watching until um, till he gets arrested and then just turning it off? Yeah. Yeah, I'd watch that. I mean, because that worked for me uh, more than anything else, you know, as I said. And... You know, maybe watch that and then watch John Carpenter's Halloween. See how well they gel together. You know, fuck. Yeah, that's yeah a, right. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. A, that's a nice little experiment, I think. Yeah, right. 
Never thought about that. Mm-hmm. That's a good fucking idea. And I tell you what, I am going to do it next Halloween season. I'm watching until mm-hmm. he gets arrested. I don't know about the going right into Halloween after, but I'm definitely just going to sit one day and watch the first whatever 40 minutes and then fucking after he gets arrested, shut it off. Click. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm going to read something funny here. This is something I wrote on, on fucking on this message board. The night mm-hmm. when I came home and – it's just a fucking couple paragraphs, but the night cons- I came home. That's the, <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> is that your tagline? That's awesome. <laughs> yes, Dave Z. The night I came home. Yes. Well, <laughs> this is just a quick thing. It's funny because I'm looking at it now. I want to know what I thought about back then and how I feel now. And listen to this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm also a hardcore fan of the original. I flip-flop between Halloween and Friday the 13th Parts 1 and 2 as my all-time favorite slasher. I really like this movie. I did not like the stepdad, Forsyth, with the -the over-the-top language in the first five minutes, which had half the theater cracking up. I did not like maybe two more things about the plot. I enjoyed the rest. Michael was aggressive, reminded me of Zombie Jason, kind of which did not bother me. I thought the mask (laughs) was great personally, the best since the original. I liked Loomis and Tommy Doyle as the closest to the original. I wasn't sure about Lori her first few minutes on screen, but warmed up to her. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking when I said that. Right? (laughs) Right. Good gore is also a plus and a high body count. Most important, though, Michael is scary again. Not the joke that he was since part two for different reasons. Uh, (laughs) That's all for now. Oh, no, that one more quick thing. Do not compare or you will will ruin your experience. (laughs) Just go in the theater with an open mind and view this as a standalone movie. People, <laughs> yeah, well, I know. <laughs> People actually applauded when this movie ended last what? night. What? Yeah, you know why? Yeah. It ended. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I could go the fuck home and do something worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking funny. Wow. And then I ended up, and I say whatever. Uh, I, I gave it four stars. <laughs> That's what wow. I said the first time I what saw this. What? Ten? <laughs> 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 Nowadays, I would. Now it would be, yeah. That that was 2007, Dave? It was August 31st, 2007. Oh, brother. Oh, yes. Man. <laughs> right? I like point. how you said don't compare when he fucking forces you to compare it. I mean, he he wants you to fucking compare it. It's crazy. Wow. It's recreating and, scenes. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, fuck. Oh, my God. As a matter of fact, I do believe it was. Happy Halloween, everybody!